So we got a new arrival at Haptic Garage. <laughs> Can you tell what it is? <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome back. We've got something a little bit different today. It's pretty cool. Uh, its origin is a little weird. It's a vehicle that's been on my property for a while and I've just recently been able to purchase it from the previous owner. And it's pretty cool. So I want to share this with you. I want to share it with you in real time. Spoiler alert, Dweezil behind me here uh, has been put on pause for a few months. The chassis is done. <laughs> I'll catch you up on how we got to this point and all the things that happened just as soon as I can. But this is something that I've got to break in to the storyline and, and share with you. There is a splitty bus behind this garage and we got to get it in here. And to do that, we're going to do one of those will it run dealy doos, right? So sorry to step on Musty One's territory, <laughs> but we're going to try it, right? So we're going to see if we can get this thing started enough to drive into the front of the garage and get it in place and then we'll start going through it to see what it's going to take to make it a daily driver because that's the that's the goal here not a huge restoration project not some drawn out thing i want to get back to dweezel this is the bus that i think i'll be driving in the meantime so let's get that thing and see if we can get it up and running in a reasonably short amount of time i don't know what was going on with the yellow <laughs> as hideous but this is what we've got to work with i think the engine has some life in it as i recall it had low oil pressure there was an episode with this thing about a decade ago where a push rod got bent and poked through the push rod tube. Now I believe that the valves were just not locked down, that someone adjusted the valves and didn't tighten the lock nut and it just loosened up on its own and that happened. But the shop that the owner was using said that it was lifter bores, that the lifter bores were so worn out that the lifter got stuck or something, I don't know. Maybe the bearings are just worn out. Maybe the lifter bores are worn out and the case is shot. Who knows, but it does run. And that's the point now is just to get the thing to run. A good thing here is electronic points. This is a, uh, a distributor that has seen very little service. Now it's kind of old, but it hasn't seen much service. So that should be a good starting point. This is a new carb. I'm sure it is all completely gummed up. I know that the fuel in the tank is is just varnished by now there's a new regulator that's cool and this battery is actually from dweezel so i'm just throwing it in here to get things cranked and uh we'll we'll see see what happens after that so let me see uh fuel yeah, i think what i'm going to do is just gravity feed this guy just to get into the garage To be fair, I have started this engine probably five or six times over the last, I don't know, eight years or so. When a hurricane was coming and I needed to move the vehicle to a, a safer spot, I've, I've oftentimes cranked it up. But that's just the easiest way to get it around the yard. But each time I've done that, it's been harder to do. <laughs> like the first couple of times I was able to use the gas in the tank and that stopped working. And so I've actually used this approach uh, a few times. Let's see if it works one more time. Well, we have good juice. I'm going to put you back here and let you watch the action. <laughs>
Well, that was exciting. <laughs> Just barely limped it in here. So there's some work to do. Uh, gonna have to get this engine a lot happier than it is now to drive it to work and stuff like that. But that's all right. Uh, I think there's really something here to work with and you can't beat the charm of a splitty bus. So let's, uh, let's have at it, shall we? <laughs> I'll bring you along for all of it, uh, all the good and the bad. Not gonna have a whole lot of room to work on things, which that's never a good deal. So uh, I'll, I'll get this bus to where it can be brought outside and I can continue work on, on Dweezil. But it doesn't look too bad in there, does it? Now that I got the thing in here, I think the first step is going to be to pull the engine, get it on a stand where I can work on it, and then set it aside because I want to pull the rims, pull the tires off of the rims, and get them sandblasted and painted. I got a chance to get underneath this thing and have a look around, and really, things look pretty good. There's uh, some dings on the chassis where it looks like they ran over a curb or something. As far as structural integrity of the chassis, it's in good shape. I don't see a lot of rust, as we often fear with old V-dubs. Now, this, this thing does have its share of little rust spots here and there. I did find one here. Uh, right here, that's not so great. So behind this totally worn out seal, there's a little bit of ugly rust there. So. Uh, I expect to find some things like that on a vehicle that's been hanging out outside for so many years. The boots, the, the swing axle boots, axle tube boots, whatever they're called, they were replaced 10 years ago. They've since cracked at the, the fold, the accordion fold closest to the transaxle and there's fluid leaking out of there so that's on the list to do before I drive it. Handful of other things but really not that bad. I'm really gonna have a much better idea of where we stand on this thing by the end of today because now we're gonna take the engine out and get a closer look at it, take the wheels off, hopefully take the drums off as well, get a look into the brakes and see just how deep we're gonna have to go to get this thing safely back on the road. It needs to run, drive, and stop. <laughs> Those are all worthy challenges. So let's get started on this thing, pull this engine out, and go from there.
I feel like that went fairly smoothly. The, uh, the fuel line, the braided fuel line that goes between the tank and the metal line passing through here was a little dry and pretty well seized to the metal line, so I snipped it. I usually like to do things a little more graceful than that, but this fuel line's getting replaced anyway. So I made my life easier and just snipped it here to take care of that issue. <laughs> Thing. The thing that I want to share with you, kind of just for fun, is a massive pet peeve of mine, and that's using the wrong fasteners. You know, the way that I judge <laughs> something to be the right or wrong fastener. I'm kind of persnickety about this, so here's what I found. This is the nut that came off one of the generator posts. The other one, the proper one, uses a 9mm wrench, and it's a 5mm post. This fits a 3 8 inch wrench, which tells me it's probably, I guess that'd be about a number 10, 32 thread. Yeah, 32 thread. Not good. <laughs> that drives me nuts, get it? <laughs> nuts, drives me nuts, yeah. Mm. So, I do have a five millimeter lock nut here. I'm still not happy with that, although it's altogether more proper. So at the swap meet this weekend, hopefully if it, if it happens, for historical context, everyone's freaking out about coronavirus right now, and it is indeed a serious thing. And that's where I think I'll be able to find one of these to go right there, and that'll make me all happy. Other than that, a non-eventful removal of the engine. I'm gonna get this thing on the stand and then put it aside because I wanna tear in to the wheels and the brakes and see what I'm dealing with there. I think I'll go ahead and take the gas tank out while I'm back here working in the engine area. This is going to need a cleanup for sure, maybe a seal, maybe replacement, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. If I recall correctly, this is a, uh, a Brazilian tank. This was a replacement itself. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of condition that cinder is in. All right, let's get this thing out and then we'll move on to wheels. of this fuel filter here this little sock that goes over the pickup tube that's going to tell me 
a little bit about what the tank looks like inside. So let's see here. Actually, that's not bad. I was expecting a really awful mess. So <clears throat> this is great. In fact, if there's no holes in it, this is probably reusable. Well, that's promising. Let's take the cinder off and see what that looks like. I'll do a resistance test on it, but that's promising. It's not all gunked up and corroded, so this must have been a replacement. Wow. This actually looks really nice inside. Check this out. There's some gunk over here at the pickup. There we go. So over there is a little bit of drama. But I think I'm gonna be able to clean this up without having to seal it. I'm really pleased with that. This tank is gonna need minimal cleanup. Not a lot of refurbishment to do on it. I might give it a coat of paint or something, but <laughs> that's great. I thought that was gonna be a big pain, especially if I needed to go with the original tank, which one would obviously prefer, but it's in terrible shape. I think I'm gonna stick with this one, and if I have some time someday, I might redo the original tank. But for now, with a little bit of cleanup, I think I've got a fuel tank uh, for this thing that's gonna work well for me. That's great news. So let's do that test on the cinder. <clears throat> so this is just a, a variable resistor and the resistance is varied by the little float dealy do going up and down the conductive strip. So we're gonna measure the resistance between what we would call a hot, I guess, and the, uh, the ground of the cinder. For those that are curious, there's always gonna be a little bit of current flowing through this and the amount of voltage drop across it is what shows up on the meter. So most meters are actually, or gauges that is, most gauges are really just voltage meters. And that's the way we do it with these. So I've got my old meter set down here on 200 ohms. That's also the continuity setting. So it beeps when there's continuity. If I'm all the way empty, I should be at pretty much the most uh, ohms. So the float would be down here if it was all the way empty, right? So I'm looking for about that much, somewhere just shy of 80 ohms. I've got 73 point something, okay? And if it's full, the thing will be all the way at the top, right? So I just heard it slide to the top when I turn it upside down. And I've got almost no ohms or about six. As it slid to the bottom, we saw the ohms go up, that's empty. As it slides to the top, we see the ohms go down, that's full. All right, I'm gonna say that this gauge is good. I tore up the gasket getting it off, so I'll have to order a new cinder gauge gasket if I don't find one in my parts stash. Cool, that was good news. The thing about having too much stuff in too small of a shop is that it gets messy almost instantly. Yeah, there's a then frequent tidying up, but I'm ready to go, ready to work on the next thing. So I'm gonna pull this wheel off and the brake drum off, and we'll see what we have in store. This is, this is, the, <laughs> this is one of the parts that I think I'm gonna have an ugly surprise. So let's tear into it, see what we're dealing with. That's been known to go a lot worse than that. <laughs> that nut is a monstrous 46 millimeters. So I'm pretty sure that's the only thing I use this socket for. While I've got it on the ground, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then I can jack this thing up to pull the wheel off. plenty of anti-seas. That's a good sign. <laughs> about a little bit of that? I think I might have been in this before. Whoa. Whoa. 
So here I'm seeing some less than ideal things. <laughs> Something is leaking. I don't know if it's the rear wheel seal or if it's this wheel cylinder here. Now, I think it's probably the wheel cylinder because the master cylinder has no fluid in it and there's clearly a leak of some sort in this location. So that's a thing. Now, my first inclination when I see this, knowing that I'm gonna have to clean it up, probably put some new parts on it, is to take it all off, sandblast it, and paint it. Like in my heart of hearts, that's what I wanna do. <laughs> but before I jump to that conclusion, maybe it's an easy fix and I can go a while before doing a project to that depth, you know? So I'm gonna look at the other three wheels and see what we're dealing with. Because I wouldn't just do one, I'd do all of them. So let me see what kind of shape they're in before I finalize that decision. Now I'm also seeing something not so great. There's supposed to be a snubber bracket here and a thing that looks like a Kong dog toy. In fact, that's what those Kong dog toys were inspired by, was that little rubber snubber thing that goes right here and hits that plate up there. Well, that bracket is missing. Also missing, you can kind of see where it was, is the brake line bracket that holds this metal line in place. So this is just sitting here. On the other side, the snubber is in place and the bracket is there, but the line is just zip tied to it. Now that's not good. Since I know some of the history of this vehicle, I recall that the previous owner sent it to a shop and they put this transaxle in to return the bus to stock ride height. It previously had a Beetle transaxle in it and it was lowered. And that's not what the previous owner wanted. So I'm glad that they did this. They had this work done. But what that shop put in here is not complete. That I feel like is something that I need to fix. The snubber for sure. I'll see if I can find a bracket, but definitely that brake line bracket. I don't want to drive this thing with a hard line flopping around like that. That's no good. So I have to find that bracket or make it welded in place and go from there. What I do with the backing plate and all that stuff, we're going to decide tonight. Let's take a look at the other wheels. This one looks a lot better. I mean, it's dusty, but I don't see any evidence of leaks here. So this is a little bit promising. I think we're looking pretty good. I don't like how rusty everything is, but... The hardware isn't all rusted up. I know the e-brakes work okay. Looks like that's reasonably free. So the adjusters aren't seized up like that boot is a little old. So I'm not sure about that. But in terms of the hardware, I think we're in good shape. I'm going to loosen up the adjusters. I don't think I'll ever get that drum off. <laughs> They're weird on the front of a bus. Now I remember from my double cab. There's, I think there's two cylinders here. Date code on these tires, 5007. Almost Christmas 12 years ago. I think that means they're old. Whoa. That's loose. So. All right, splitty owners, school me. What can I do about that? Does this mean I need to replace parts this is link pin king and link pin beam king beam pin link something. Or is that something I can adjust out? That 
that strikes me as too much. down. This one looks pretty good too. It's got the same issue with the, the play up and down. They look good, but I'm leaning towards pulling everything off and painting the backing plates. I don't think I'm gonna need to do much more than that. All the hardware looks good. These cylinders are not leaking, so that's good. If I'm gonna do that, if I'm gonna have the braking system at, you know, kind of reset like that, I think I wanna have paint on the backing plates. So I'm probably gonna pull them off and include them in the paint party that will already feature <laughs> the wheels and the drums and a couple other knickknacks. So that might be the limit. I can only paint so much at one time without causing bigger problems. So we might be at the depth of it. I sure hope so. Great. Check out the next video to see if we keep things under control or we end up with another never-ending project. The goal is to get this thing on the road by the end of the COVID-19 crisis. Here's to hoping that both of those happen sooner rather than later. While you're here, be sure to check out the VW Bug Dweezil project and share it with someone who likes this stuff too. See you there.